Are you tired of your GarageBand projects being a disorganized mess? <laughs> well, in this video, I'm giving you five tips to clean up that mangy project so that you can save time and not get lost in your own GarageBand project. Tip number one is simple. Start by naming your tracks. To name a track, all you have to do is double click on the text on the track header. If it's your lead vocal, name it the lead vocal. If it's a background vocal, we'll name it that and even number it. If you have other singers in your song, we'll put their name in there and even what part they're singing. And of course, if you're using your microphone to record other instruments like your acoustic guitar or even your violin, we'll name those tracks. Naming your track literally takes five seconds, but it can save you so much time and headache later on in the process, especially if you have lots of tracks in your project. My second tip for organizing your messy GarageBand project is to give an appropriate icon to each track. You can change the icon on any track by simply right clicking on the picture on the track. Then this menu pops up where you can choose from a whole library's worth of little images to put on your track. Maybe for your lead singer, you want a big microphone. Maybe for your background singer, you want a background singer small microphone. Maybe for a female singer, you want to have a picture of a female on a microphone. Then you can search through the menu and find images for things like guitars or even your violin. Now again, this might seem like a small thing, but let's go back to the original image where all five of these tracks look exactly the same. So naming them and giving them their own icon really helps them stand apart, which simply means that you're gonna be able to find each track faster and have less confusion in your project. Step number three for whipping that project into shape is organizing your tracks in an orderly, logical way. You see, when we start a song, we tend to create tracks as we get inspired, and then we just keep adding more and more random tracks below that until we end up with a disorganized mess. Now, there's lots of ways that you can organize and group your tracks, but for me, I like to start with the highest frequency vocals and instruments on top, and then move down to my lower frequency instruments on the bottom, which looks like putting my lead vocal on top, my background vocals below that, then my mid-range instruments, then below that is my bass, then below that would be any percussive elements, and then at the bottom would be my drums. I do this in every project, so I always know where to go if I'm looking for a vocal, or looking for a drum track, or looking for a guitar track. They're always generally in the same place within my projects. My fourth tip for organizing your GarageBand projects is using the arrangement track. All you have to do is go up to the track menu and click on show arrangement track. A little window will appear above your tracks that says arrangement. Then you simply click the plus button and you can name different sections of your song. This part is indeed my intro, but it's only four bars, so I will shave it down. Then you click the button again and a box that says verse pops up. Make sure it fits your verse part, and then I like to even get more specific and rename it verse one, verse two, and so on. Then of course, you'll do the same thing for the rest of your song. You can name your chorus, your bridge, any outros, any interludes, you can name it whatever you want. But what this does for me is it gives me a visual clue as to where I'm at in the song instead of clicking around randomly to find my part. And yeah, you probably know your way around your own project, but I found this to be really helpful when I'm working with other people. My fifth and final tip for organizing your GarageBand workflow is to name your songs and then save them in a specific folder. If you hit save on a new song, it'll just be some generic name and that's fine. But once you get about 30 ideas, you're gonna start to forget which song is which. I like to have a folder for each genre that I typically write in. So if this song is a pop song, it's getting saved into the pop folder. So my pro tip for all five of these tips is to do all of these things as you go. What I mean by that is simply get into the habit of naming every new track and giving it its own icon. And if you create a new drum track, then put it near the bottom. If you create a new vocal track, put it near the top. So in conclusion, am I saying you have to do all five of these things? No, but I am saying it's a great way to streamline your workflow, which means you're saving time and you're eliminating headaches. And if organizing your projects gives you more time to do what you really wanna do, then why wouldn't you spend a few extra seconds and do it? 